And you know, we've got, we're streaming this live on Facebook tonight. So for those of us who are just pitching in and joining us on Facebook, thank you for very much for taking some time out of your, your schedule to join us. We hope you get a lot of information out of this. Uh, if you would take a minute, tag your high school in the chat on Facebook. Uh, we'd love to just kind of know where you're coming from and connect with those schools. Uh, so really easy, at sign, should know how to do that. Type in your school name. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see where everyone's coming from. In the webinar, we've got some Plainview High School, Duchenne Academy, Red Oak High School. That's nice to see. So Central City, a couple more Millard North, a couple more North Platte. So lots of kids out there coming from a lot of different places. So. Uh, my name is Jason Combs. I am the social media and interactive technology manager here at Education Quest. My role, very simple. I'm here to get you started, turn everything over to Joan, let her tell you all the information you need because I have nothing for you other than where chat is. So if you're on a mobile device, you tap on your screen, you'll be able to pull up your chat menu from there uh, if you're in the webinar software. For those of us joining us on Facebook, we are monitoring comments on Facebook. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, at any point in time during the broadcast. If you're in Click Meeting, just put it in the chat. If you're on Facebook, put it in the chat. And when we get all the way to the end, I will pop back on and make sure that Joan answers any questions that you have. So just keep them coming, pile them up. Um, I keep a running tab because I like to know how many questions I get in a, in a uh, live stream. So we will see if we can break some records tonight here. So. Definitely ask away with any questions. And again, if you are um, able to, just tag your high school in Facebook. And if you're in Click Meeting, tell us where you're coming from, and we'll keep uh, posting those things. Love to see where you guys are all from. So I have nothing else, Joan. With no further ado, this is your show. Enjoy. All right. Thank you, Jason. And thank you, everyone, for joining joining us for this senior college planning presentation. It is so nice to have a great audience. For all of you watching from home or from your high school, tonight I will be using the College Prep Handbook for the 21-22 school year. You can find that on the Education Quest website. If you don't have to ha have a paper copy with you, you can access that now or wait till after the program so you don't miss anything. Tonight, we're really going to talk about the high school senior and what that senior and parents, what you should be doing to get started, to find the right fit, what entrance exams the student might have to take in order to get accepted to college or to look for scholarships, how to pay for college, and then where to get free help. But before we dive into all the specifics on the college admission process, I want seniors to think a little bit about what they want to do with their future. Think about what they're really good at. Think about their interest and their skills, what careers maybe fit those interests and skills. And then finally, what major the student would go into in order to get an actual job in that related field. That all goes hand in glove with the college selection process. So the student will know what type of college to look for and potentially how long they're gonna have to go to school. Now, I would like to see in the chat, what is the first thing you think of when you hear the word college? Parents, counselors, students, what is the first word that comes to your mind when you're thinking the word college? For our presentation tonight, when I refer to the word college, we are going to be looking at any form of higher institution the student has an option of attending. That higher institution might be in the form of a community college where the student can potentially earn an associate's degree in two years of education, or maybe they go to school for a diploma or for a certificate where it might be a 16 or an 18 month program. Oftentimes students will look at a community college as a way of getting some of their general education courses out of the way, earning that two year degree, and then moving on to the next category, our college and universities that offer a four year degree or what we call a bachelor's degree. That bachelor's degree program can ultimately lead to 
a master's program, or even beyond as we look at a doctorate level. Now, there's also a category of schools not to leave out, and that is our career or our trade schools. Again, where a student might offer or have the opportunity to go into a program for a 12, a 16, an 18 month program and actually get a degree only in that specific field of study. So keep this in mind as we talk about college for tonight. Researching out college, ideally high school juniors should have been doing this or they should be doing it now. My seniors should have been doing it last year, but it's not too late. You're gonna to continue to do that for the next couple of months. Talk to your school counselors. Talk to your counselors about what options would fit based on what career path or major you wanna go into. More importantly, talk to the admission reps. They come to your high school and they visit maybe before school, over the lunch hour, after school, study hall break. You can check out our college profile, profiles at Education Quest. Dot org, and then also attend a college fair. This is a great way to meet a counselor, an admissions counselor, and talk about the college process at their school. Also, websites of those colleges. Many offer virtual websites such as uh, where you can visit through a virtual tour, potentially. Speaking of virtual opportunities, Education Quest is going to offer three fall college fairs, all offered virtually in October, November, and December. This is a great way for students to get information about schools maybe they haven't ever heard of before, or schools they have heard about and they want to get more information. It's important for the student to register ahead of time, but we have a great opportunity for students who visit at least five college booths during the college fair event. They get their name put into a drawing for a $500 scholarship from Education Quest. Visiting colleges, very important in the whole college admission process. A lot like buying a car. You're most likely not going to buy a car unless you test drive it first. So visiting a college campus is a lot like test driving a car. You want to check it out, see how that student fits into the classroom. How far are the dorms from the main campus? How do they feel setting in a group or a classroom lecture of 20 or maybe 200? Test driving that college to see if it has the right fit. Is it too far? Is it too close to home? Start doing this already this fall if you haven't begun the process of visiting a college campus. Very important to ask a lot of questions to those admission reps and even the student ambassadors who might give a tour of the college campus. If you can't check out the college in person, again, a virtual college visit is an option as well. Then narrow your choices down, again, based on the academic program. Does it have the major you want to go into? The size of the school, is it too big, is it too small? I went to high school with 58 seniors, other seniors. I grew up in a really small community. However, I ended up coming to Omaha where it was a big community, but my college was pretty small. So take a look and see what kind of a difference that's going to make for the student. The location, again, is it too far? Is it too close? to home. And of course, most seniors probably have the idea that they want to move as far away as possible in the fall anyway. But then as it gets a little bit closer to graduation, they might back off some of that and decide they want to stay closer to home. That's why it's always important to have options. The cost of the school, of course, the career prep, how the college is going to help the student prepare for going into that field and of course the social climate of the college campus. How am I gonna be able to meet people? Think about transfer options as well. This is an opportunity for a student who maybe again, wants to go to a community college and start out and then potentially work into a four-year degree program. 
A lot of great opportunities among our Nebraska colleges who have a sortium agreements where they will transfer those credits directly over so the student doesn't lose time by having to transfer to another institution. You can check that all out at transfer.nebraska.edu. Now, you might hear of these terms such as the ACT, the SAT, or even the Accuplacer. These are entrance exams. Now, a lot of colleges will require them for the admission application process. Some colleges will exempt a student from having those particular scores. However, if they do not require them as part of college admission, make sure the student knows what requirements are set in place for the scholarships at those colleges, because oftentimes they will require an entrance exam as part of the scholarship requirement. So make sure that you know that ahead of time, students and parents, what you're looking at and ask those college reps when you're visiting them. Preparing for the college admission process. I absolutely encourage students to make sure they have three categories or classifications of schools. Number one, plan A, your dream school. If you could go anywhere, where would it be? Plan B, that sure thing. I know I can get accepted with a little bit of financial aid help. I know that we can afford it as well. And then always have plan C, the backup option, right? The school that might be in your backyard or that sure thing that we know we can afford. And I know I can get accepted to the one that's close to home, just in case. Always have those categories of schools. Um, can't stress that enough over my 24 years at Education Quest, how often we see students lose scholarship opportunities because they have one school in mind versus maybe having a plan B or a plan C school, and then it's too late, they miss out on scholarship opportunities. So have those plans, have those discussions, make sure you know what schools might fit into each of those categories. And then depending upon the type or the institution, the student is looking at whether they have an early action type of admission that's non-binding, some of the students might be looking at what we call early decision, which is where that college will accept the student. And then that's where they're gonna go to. No matter the financial aid terms the student receives, if they go through an early decision program, that's where they're gonna go to school. And then we have the rolling or the regular admission process, which is where a student can apply for admissions at any time. I like to encourage students to complete at least three to four admission application forms. Five to six, that's okay. But remember, you ultimately have to narrow it down to one school. So the more manageable you make it, the easier it becomes later on. Most college admission applications will require a fee require high school transcripts. So we've got a lot of great counselors listening in tonight with classrooms. Students, be sure you talk to those counselors about getting your transcripts sent. And then sometimes again, ACT or SAT, depending upon the school. Now, same time you're working on the college admission process, which is right now in the fall, ideally one year before you're gonna go to school there, this is the same time you're ultimately going to be working and concentrating on the financial aid process. Now, the federal financial aid process for my high school seniors doesn't actually open up until October 1st. And that is for students who are going to be entering college in the 22-23 academic year. That FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid, is going to require the 2020 income taxes. So the taxes that you just filed back in January, February, or March, or maybe later, that's the information that you're going to be using to complete the 22-23 FAFSA application. Now, 
I'm not going to give you a lot of information and spoil the fun because that is yet to come in another presentation. But I am going to touch on the four types of financial aid. We have scholarships, grants, work study, and student loans. Scholarships, free money, the best kind of money that we're hoping for. It's a gift, money that we don't have to pay back based upon a lot of different criteria, whether it's academic merit, leadership, talent, the list goes on. Grants are a lot like scholarships. Grants you don't have to pay back, but typically based on financial need, the financial ability of the family who's completing the FAFSA application. Then we have work study programs. This is where a student can work on campus and earn a little bit of extra incidental money. Now, keep in mind, they're not going to get rich off of a work study job, but they will get rich in getting to know professors, faculty, and staff on the campus and getting to know other students. So it's really like an extracurricular activity that they can get to know and meet other people. Then we have student loans. Of course, money you have to pay back right? Just like our mortgage or our car loans. Student loans are investing back in that student's higher education. Nobody can take that away from them. Scholarship resources. Now is a perfect time. If you didn't have the opportunity this summer to be looking for scholarships, high school seniors have got to get on the ball with that. Get organized and start looking for them. The number one resource of scholarship information is going to come from the colleges you're pursuing an interest from. That's where the money comes from. Those schools want you at their institution. And what better way to get you there than scholarship money, free money that you don't have to pay back. But again, it's important that you talk to those colleges and find out what the admission process, deadline date, application, um, date is, everything. Talk to those schools because every school is a little bit different in how they award scholarship money. We also have the school counseling office, another very important resource for our students. Keep in mind the school counselor is not there to make sure the student gets money for college. They are there as a resource of higher institution. Of, of scholarships. So be sure that the student is reading the newsletter, they're checking their email, etc. Also private organizations, parents that you and the student belongs to, make sure you're checking those out. We have a search program on our website called Scholarship Quest. Scholarship Quest is a Nebraska-based search program. We have a little over 2,000 scholarships on the search program. So a student can go in, set up their profile of information, and see what possible scholarships come out of that search. Then also we have free internet websites too that are, you can link to from Scholarship Quest. That's another resource, but be very careful that you never pay for a scholarship search. Here are three neat opportunities from Education Quest. We have the Financial Aid Program Scholarship. You'll learn more about financial aid programs here in just a minute, but we are going to offer six $500 scholarships for any student who either they or their parent or guardian attend one of our virtual financial aid or in-person financial aid programs. We have a scavenger hunt scholarship. This will open up September 1. You, all you have to do is go out and create a profile on Scholarship Quest after September 1st. And once you create that profile, a list of scholarships will come up, including scavenger hunt, go through, find the necessary information that we're asking you to find, and then you can apply, have your name put in the drawing for the scholarship. That closing will be the middle of March. And last of all, we have the Get Social Scholarship. This is Jason's favorite one because it earmarks every 250 likes or followers that we get on social media. We will then post information about applying for a $500 scholarship giveaway from Education Quest. So be sure you like or follow us in order to get that opportunity to apply. Now, how much is going 
college going to cost? You may answer and say, a lot. Well, you're right. But through the help of financial aid, it is important that the student looks for that. And in that college prep handbook, it breaks down the cost of education budget. If you happen to be looking at your college prep handbook, if you look at page five, you're going to see the breakdown of the cost of education, which includes tuition and fees, books, supplies, room and board, personal and transportation expenses. These are all things that the colleges are going to budget that it's going to cost a student to go to school for one academic year. So potentially even my college student who lives at home, somebody's paying for room and board, personal and transportation expenses, even though she's right here and goes to and from school. So when we look at the overall average cost of our Nebraska schools for a two-year community college, a four-year public, four-year private or career school, you can see there what the average costs potentially are going to be, again, for one year of education. We'll find out more about the costs and financial aid as we do other financial aid programs throughout the year. Now, I know I have given you a lot of information. The good thing is we have a senior timeline available to all families who can follow the timeline through. You can also sign up for countdown to college emails to get monthly reminders on, be sure you're looking for scholarships, taking the ACT, how to visit schools and what questions to ask, reminders about the virtual college fair. And then on into the winter term, when we talk more about financial aid and getting those offers from the college. And then we get to spring where we're comparing award letters from different colleges, registering for housing and applying for summer jobs. And before we know it, summer's going to be here again when that student is looking at new student orientation. It is literally going to go that fast, but not to fret. Education Quest is here to help you through that process. Here this fall and in the upcoming spring, we will be offering several webinars to help the student and you parents through the college admission and financial aid process. We have a lot of great webinars coming up, September, October, November, and again, the college fairs and then more programs in the spring. So be sure to join us for those. You can get free help from Education Quest as a private nonprofit organization. We provide all of our services absolutely free. You can call any one of our offices to make an appointment, but you can also follow us, as I mentioned, on social media. We've got some new Facebook groups that are new and exciting that you can also follow depending upon if you're high school junior or senior family. We also have the Spanish Facebook Facebook group. Here's just a few tools that we offer on our Education Quest website, the activities resume where you can track your activities, you can look for colleges. My favorite one, the College Funding Estimator that allows you to go in and estimate the FAFSA, Scholarship Quest, just a lot of great tools that we do have to offer. If you have questions about this presentation or about any information, feel free to contact any of our college planning locations and specialists will be glad to help you. Jason, how are we doing with questions for the evening? We're gonna answer the, the few that we have, but it is sure. not too late. You can go ahead and contribute your questions now and we will make sure that we get those answered. Uh, Joan, I think we're going to start with one about the college fairs. Okay. Uh, there was actually a couple questions here, it looks like, about how the college fairs will work considering the whole pandemic and social distancing and are we actually doing them in person? So can you kind of go back and explain a little bit about how the college fairs work now? Sure. So Education Quest, we're actually offering the virtual college fair. So you can't get much better social distancing than a virtual college fair, which allows the student to go in and register 
their information. And then on the day and time of the college fair, they will have their registration or their barcode that associates who they are. And student can go out and they can actually visit with college reps. So the college reps will be on there. They'll be live at different times during the college fair. They'll have videos. You can sit in on group discussions and listen to the college rep talk about their admission and their school process. So it's a great opportunity, again, to just click in from home. There's some day college fair opportunities and some evening programs. Now, I do also know there are some rural schools through the state of Nebraska, and I know Lincoln is offering some mini college fair opportunities, and I know even some several high schools offer the opportunity for some schools to come in and visit. But if that concerns you, again, the virtual college fair is a neat opportunity that allows a student still to talk to an admission rep and get questions answered. But be sure yeah, you register. You've got to register for that barcode so that when a student goes out and checks out a college, they know how to reach out to the student later on. Yeah, I mean, gone are the, the old days of us having to write our names and addresses on cards and turn them in at the booth. So uh, oh that's gosh, all done yes. ahead of time. I put up the slide that Joan had when she talked about that. So you have dates and times there if you want to write those down uh, and that link to register. So again, you know, because of the change, because it's going online and stuff, you want to make sure that you register ahead of time and that link will get you where you need to go. Uh, I will point out too, there's been a couple questions about some resources and stuff. I've gone ahead and pinned a comment on Facebook that has the handbook. Uh, and I've put a lot of the resources that Joan talked about with Scholarship Quest and College Profiles and some of the other stuff from our website uh, in the chat so you can go directly to those. Uh, if you have anything, if you ever get lost or, you know, I know how it is a week from now, this is going to be the last thing on your mind. You're going to be like, hey, what was that thing that she talked about? Uh, educationquest.org, you'll find everything there, really easy to kind of get around and find all of the great tools, the ones that Jones talked about. And there's a ton of them there, so there's many that she didn't talk about. Uh, so you can kind of access any of those there. Um, Joan, there's a question about scholarships and if it's too late for seniors to be applying for scholarships, should they have done it before now? Scholarship searching, the bulk of scholarships that a high school senior can apply for will be coming up now in the fall and in the spring of senior year. So yes, there are some that they potentially could have applied for, but most importantly, the reason why we say start early is so that you can really get a head start, get organized, set up an accordion file folder. So maybe you find one that doesn't have a due date or doesn't open up until January. If you find out about it now, that's one less you have to look for later on. So it's absolutely not too late, but you do want to begin because seniors get busy, parents, guardians, you get busy, and looking for scholarships is a full-time job. Been there, done that three times around, and just because I understand the process doesn't mean it's any easier. So really use the resources, use the websites we've given you, talk to the counselors, but especially make sure you know the scholarship procedures at the colleges of interest. I have a freshman in high school and it still makes me nervous that we're at that. So Ugh. we yeah. feel your pain going through it. So we'll try to help <laughs> as much as we can, right? Right. Uh, we got, I got one more question here so far. So if anyone does have any more questions, now is going to be the time to get them in. Otherwise, this will be uh, our last question. Okay. And Joan, that question is about the FAFSA. And they're asking, when should they do that? Can they do that now? All right. So the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid for students who are entering college in the 22-23 academic year. That FAFSA will not be available until October 1. So don't worry about it yet. You can use some of the tools on the Education Quest website to plan ahead for the FAFSA application. Be sure you check out our webinar in the month of September and October to get a head start on the FAFSA process and understand, more importantly, the deadlines and the process and what that means. 
but you cannot actually complete the FAFSA until after October 1. But there are certainly things you can do now to prepare for that process and make it easier later on. But be sure you check out our website for the important dates of the next webinars coming up during September and October. Looks like we got another question that came in, still on the same topic of FAFSA. And the question is, does the ACT score matter on the FAFSA? On the FAFSA application form, ACT, SAT does not matter at all. The FAFSA form is only going to collect household information and income and or asset information of the student applicant and the parents. Awesome. Um, <laughs> this is one that I know you're gonna you're gonna struggle with because it's not a quick uh, a quick answer. So oh no, I have I have a feeling this may be the you need to attend the FAP. But whose okay. taxes do you use for divorced parents? Oh, that is a great question for the financial aid program in September <laughs> and October. However, I will attempt to answer it for you this evening. So filing the FAFSA application form, you are correct. It is going to require your 2020 income tax information. Now, in the case of a divorce situation, currently you are going to use the parent who's considered the custodial parent, the parent that the student lives with more than 50% of the time. So more than 50% of the time, you use that parent as the custodial parent. If that parent happens to be remarried, you will use the step parent's information in combination with the custodial parent. The non-custodial parent information will not be used at all. So that is a simple answer. If you need more direction, call one of our Education Quest offices, or again, be sure you check out our financial aid webinars later this fall. Yeah, you'll get a lot of that good information, more in-depth yeah. information and stuff there. And as Joan said, we are always happy to help you. So reach out to us on social media, call any one of our offices. Uh, there's a contact form on our website. If you want to send us an email, you can do so that way. So lots of different ways to get a hold of us if you have any more questions about this. Otherwise, Joan, that is all we have for tonight. So I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight yes. uh, and coming here. Hopefully you got all the information that you needed. And this will help you kind of plan your senior year and be ready for what comes next with the FAFSA in a month. All right. Thank you, Jason, for your help as well. And I too want to thank you all for joining us this evening. Have a good night. Bye, everyone. Take care.